King's back. Ah! This is about, you know, exposing the devil. This is real hard for me to do right now because this is my family. But I know that God is with me and it has to be done in order for there to be deliverance and restoration. And start off by hitting that subscribe button. When you do, tap the little bell icon next to it, that way you won't miss anything. And speaking of subscribing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be completely honest and transparent with everything that I'm about to say. I have some friends that are on Facebook right now watching this who are not in church and you may not understand a lot of the spiritual terms and things that I may use, but I hope that you get the gist of what I'm saying from the natural aspects as well. Growing up in church, first of all, I'm truly grateful for that because from there I received my foundation. I received that old fashioned teaching, so to speak. And that teaching is what Shauna and I have instilled in our kids. But being a church kid whose family runs the church, you also experience the other side of that as well. I was always told that everything that happened concerning the family stays in the family, which is why I suppressed what happened to me for so long. I was molested by my oldest cousin, Robert Moe. In fact, there are a total of eight male cousins that I know about that was molested by him. One of my cousins committed suicide over it. Those of us that have tried to come forth and expose what was going on to our family have been shunned and basically told to shut up. And if we say anything, it's sowing discord in the church. And with me being shunned after this, he was elevated. I just have to stop right there for a minute. Let me just also say, if anyone thinks this is made up or untrue, please hit up my cousin, H.R. Crump, and Angelo Mo. The Bible states that by the witness of two or three, a thing is established, 2 Corinthians 13 and one. I'm just gonna pause right there for a minute. And I just want to say this, I'm not doing this, you know, to get lights or anything else, but it had to be exposed. I personally had a meeting in 2009 when I learned he was still molesting other people. I had to finally stop suppressing what had happened to me and confront my family and my cousin. I was met with strong opposition, but I was hoping that something would be done about it. It wasn't. They actually promoted him to pastor and allowed him to start a mentoring program in the churches. Again, I hope that he would get some help 
and I hoped that he was stopping or stop what he was doing. That was back in 2009. About two weeks ago, I found out that he molested and turned out a person in the church. And that person went on to rape other members of their family. With the pressure of all the stuff that Yolanda Swift was coming forth with, they finally moved him back to Alabama. But now down there, he's able to prey on other little children. I can no longer stand by and let this happen to other little boys. I have no other choice but to expose what has happened for over 40 years in hopes of saving other children and setting the victims that have been captive to the secret for so long free. I pray that by me coming forth, it will free others to come forth and be freed. Now I'm gonna be pausing a lot through this because like I said in the beginning, this is very hard for me because this is my family. This is not second, third, or fourth cousin. This is my family. There have been those coming in the church that were trying to get free from the spirit of homosexuality. My family paired my cousin Robert up with this person as a mentor because Robert was quote unquote a leader. And this person eventually left the church worse than what he came in because of the homosexual relationship that was going on with Robert. My family covered that up. But he's still, at the same time, an elder in the church, laying hands on people, those spirits on him transferring to everybody he's touching. And y'all are wondering why people are going home worse than before they came up for prayer. This had to be dealt with. This cannot be downplayed. This that has been happening to these victims is serious. There are spiritual and natural consequences of this being done to these boys. Then my family wants to say with some people, oh, they're in and out of jail, they're a bad person, let's pray that God will turn their life around. No, y'all have been covering up with Robert has been doing to them for years and now spiritual demonic doors have been opened. Oh my gosh. cannot continue to let this to go on. And let me say this, I am far from perfect. I'm not exposing this because I'm sitting up on the mountain top. I'm far from perfect, but the difference with me and others I've been around long enough to know if you keep doing something without getting a proper deliverance, God will give you over to a reprobate mind. And you think that what you're doing is okay because God hasn't judged you. I know for a fact that this is the case, even with speaking to a father 
this week of his son that was molested by Robert. The father contacted Robert for him to own up to what he did. And Robert's response was, well, it's his word against mine. And this is not the first time he has said something like this, either to the victims or the parents. Some would probably say, looking at this video, Greg, you're causing discord. This is not discord. This is exposing the devil and the serial sin in the church. My heart goes out to the victims again. This is why I'm doing this video. Not just for the natural reasons, because I know if this doesn't get dealt with and handled correctly, their lives can be jacked up from this traumatic experience. And it's a traumatic experience for holding all of this in and feeling or not feeling that you have an outlet to be able to tell somebody, yes, this is what happened. This person was supposed to be a leader, my leader. The one that did this to me. That's why I'm coming forward, because now you have a voice. Then let's not even get into the spiritual aspect of it when something like this happens. There's a doorway that's opened up for demonic forces to get in. Things just don't happen to people after stuff like this happens to them. They find other ways to suppress what happened to them. Doing drugs, smoking weed, being promiscuous, all of that. And that's from that door being open of them being molested. And this is going on right in the church. And you're calling yourself a pastor. I do not hate my cousin. I do not hate my family. I just hate the covering up of this sin. And because there has been no repentance and no apologies given, not only to God, but to his victims, he had to be exposed. And especially because he is a pastor in a church and has to deal with young and older men all the time. Most of these cases come from his involvement in the church with young boys and young men. We hate the sin and the fact that he hasn't repented even when called, confronted to, confronted and spoken to by victims and their families. But still our job is to even pray for them. There has been no open rebuke. There has been I just want to say this because there's so many things that are going through my head right now. When my Uncle John was alive, that's the legacy that I remember. There will be times when I used to come into the church knowing that I wasn't living right. And the spirit of God in him would say, Brother Greg, is there anything you want to say? Anything you want to talk to me about? And I'm like, Uncle John, how did you even know, or excuse me, Bishop John, how did you even know that I was with such and such last night? But it was just the spirit of God on him. He was that in tune with the spirit of God. There's been other times where not just leaders, but people in the church would do things and it would cause a reproach to the church. Even if one person came to my uncle Bishop John and said something, he would first 
get other witnesses and if that was something that was the truth after a Sunday Tuesday or Friday night service he would have everybody leave that weren't members of the church he would have them well he would preface before they came up and tell the congregation why they were coming up but he would let the person that did whatever they did speak for themselves to openly openly repent in front of the church where is that legacy All of the victims that are looking at this, I just want to say first, I apologize to you for my family, for the leaders not believing in you, for my family, the leaders not believing in you. apologize for them I shouldn't have to do that but I feel with me exposing this and apologizing for them now you can come forward and speak about this speak up about this oh, I'm sorry y'all I'm sorry. <sighs> and then in the church, people wonder why they're not living fulfilled lives. Why? And they're made to feel that it's their fault. But this stuff has been covered up 40 years. My family has known about this and they haven't said anything. This is not the first time. This has been going on through the years. This stuff has been covered up. I literally, last month, well, before I even say that, when I went to meet with my family about what had happened to me back in 2009, at first the meeting wasn't supposed to be about me. There was another member that was on the verge of leaving the church. He came and spoke to my wife and I on various instances about stuff that was going on. Him being propositioned by Robert. That's the reason I was having the meeting. But I knew that they wouldn't believe what I was bringing to them, so I put myself out there and brought up old hurts and old memories of what he did just so there can be justice for this person. And in that meeting, my family didn't even believe me. But I'm not even going to backtrack. But the reason why I said that, because that same person, I haven't spoke to him in about four or five years. He called me last month. called me last month and he said um, 
He said, Greg, I have so much respect for you and your wife. He said, because at my lowest when I was there, you guys were the only ones that can talk with me, can pray with me to get me out of what I was dealing with while I was at the church. He said, and because of that, I feel that I owe you to do something against Robert for what he did to me. Now, this is a person that left the church calling me out of the blue last month saying this. And I said, you know what? My wife and I, we've always been the type. If there's something that happens, somebody wrongs us, anything, we always let God deal with it because God is the best judge. And I'm not just saying that just for like cliche or anything, but I've seen various instances where people have done stuff to us and we're like, all right, you know, it hurts. We cried, we did what we had to do, but we never got back at them. And always, every account, God has stepped in and been the judge. We never had to do anything. And I told him, and I said, because if we would have done something to try to step in, then that would have been our reward for judging that person. But I've been in church long enough to know that God can judge much better than you or me. So, I know I'm putting it out there. You know, I know, again, this is my family, but it had to be said. I can't, I can't keep going on knowing that people were hurt, victimized, molested, and I know that things are still going on and nothing is being done. Again, I'm sorry I'm taking all these breaks, but it's just overwhelming for me this whole week alone. This whole week alone, oh my gosh. Sunday I put up, I, okay, gosh, let me even say this. I was off of Facebook for about six months was off for six months um, I took a little hiatus the only reason I came back to Facebook was to say that what Yolanda Swift brought forward was a hundred percent true I don't know if any of you saw my comment and my post that I did on Sunday that's what I did no lie, that Sunday night, I get a call from one of the leaders. <sighs> Sunday and Monday, um, my wife and I, we were on a college tour with my son. So we were handling that and I couldn't really, you know, talk, but I knew what it was about. Wednesday, this person called me again, left a message. He said, Greg, God has told me you need to stop posting and stop agreeing with Yolanda Swift. Now, first of all, this person knew. I'm just putting everything out there. Um, 
before me and my wife got married, and this is all going to tie in, and I'm sorry I'm jumping around, but before me and my wife got married, another leader came up to me. And this is one of the reasons why we left the ministry 18 years ago. Another leader, my family member, came up to me and said, Greg, God told me that Roshana is not good for the family. So if I didn't believe, quote unquote, your God back then, in the past 18 years, yes, my wife and I had to basically start all over, start that relationship all over again after leaving the church. We was out there on an island by ourselves. But if God is telling you this, don't you think if I have a relationship with God also, he's going to reveal that to me as well? So getting back to this leader that called me, it was kind of funny because I said, do you think I'm going to listen to you now after before 18 years ago, that same thing was said to me using God And they said that I'm so in discord. But for the past 40 years, y'all been covering up stuff and I'm so in discord. I applaud Yolanda Swift for coming forward. And then that's another thing. How is she gonna know anything unless God is the one that told her? She has details. That's only from God. But when it's not in line with their agenda, you're the bad person. There's been so many people that have been kicked out of the church saying, don't speak to them. When is the leadership ever going to take the stand and say, okay, God, is it us? Is it me? I'm not even a leader, but this is the foundation that I was brought under. To even have that reverence, that compassion. So that's it. That's what I want to say. Um, I just want to leave with this before I say a prayer for all of the victims. For those of you that are victims and for those that have had your kids around Robert, even if you don't think anything was done to them, please talk to them and ask them in a closed environment, not around other siblings and stuff like that, but ask if Robert has done anything to them. Like y'all don't understand how serious this is. It's not just natural, but it's spiritual. And this has to be dealt with. These victims have to be restored. And God is the only one that can do that. <sighs> one last thing. It was said that this happened over 30 years ago. It's been covered under the blood what Robert has been doing. I know for a fact, victims that aren't even 30 years old, aren't even 20 years old, not even 10, 
Let's keep going down. Not even five years old. And you're telling me it's covered under the blood. It happened over 30 years ago. The devil is a liar. Oh my gosh. Again, please, if you are a victim, come forth. It's unhealthy to keep this in. It's unhealthy to keep this in. There's some of my other cousins that this has happened to. They haven't even told nobody. Well, told their parents. We have to get closure from this. That's why it had to be exposed. Too many people. Too many people are living from this unfulfilled life because of what my cousin Robert did to them in the church. So that's why I had to come forward with this. I can care less what happens to me. I know I'm covered under the blood. This had to get out. Again, I'm sorry for keep taking breaks and stuff, but this has been, oh my gosh, this week alone, just even building up to this day, there's been so much, so many demonic forces that have been coming against me for this not to get out. Again, Yolanda Swift, thank you so much for bringing this to the forefront. Because there's been people that have said stuff, but it's been covered up for years. sure that I had said everything that I wanted to say before I say this prayer for the victims. Please everyone to on your page, even I know that we're friends on here and that's how you saw it, but please share this. I have a copy of this video. So even if it gets taken down, it's fine. All right, let's pray. And this is for all of the victims. I just want to say a prayer for y'all. And before I even pray, just everybody that's looking at this, this is not, I'm not doing this so people can run and gossip and everything else. And oh, this is what happened and all of this stuff. It's past that past that we need to be prayerful we need to be praying for these victims praying that God will convict Robert to even come forward and even say what he is a lot of times in the church in the black church we don't want to deal with stuff like this we don't want to call it like it is good friend Everton put up on his page about the Catholic Church they'll in a minute expose somebody that's doing something wrong and then they 
stripped them from their title and everything. That's in the Catholic Church. My cousin, he needs help. I'm not sugarcoating nothing. I didn't come on here and try to sugarcoat any of this stuff. This is all, it happened to me. Everything that I shared is transparent and truthful. He needs help. He's a pedophile. Let's call it like it is. And until he gets help, how many other people are gonna be victimized because of him? Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, today we pray in the name of Jesus for the minds of each victim. We pray that their minds be renewed by the word of God and with Christian counseling. We pray for the hearts of each victim that they would forgive the abuser so they can move forward with their lives. We pray that each victim be delivered from the spirit of rage and anger. We pray that the spirit of peace overshadow each victim and causes them to experience your love and overwhelming grace. Lord, while repentance is necessary, we pray that justice prevails in these situations and wisdom is given to all who are involved. Lord, we pray that each victim would have the courage to step forward and report what has happened to them and be truthful about their experiences. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, we break up the spirit of secrecy and hiding right now. Lord, we break the spirit of silence. In the name of Jesus, we ask for the angels of God to come and bring protection. And we ask you to minister to the parents of each victim. Lastly, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would deliver each victim from the spirit of shame and feeling dirty. Those spirits that came from these unwanted sexual encounters. Lord, at this time, we pray for the abuser, Robert Mo Jr. Our prayer is that you would cause him to be truthful about what he's done. Let the spirit of truth overcome the spirit of lies and of cover-up and darkness that he's lived in for all of these years. Heal him from whatever happened to him that opened up the door for the spirit to even enter him. Cause him to understand how much damage he's done to so many young boys and many who are now men and are messed up emotionally, sexually, and spiritually. In Jesus' name, Lord, open his eyes. Let a spirit of repentance come upon him. Let him understand that you love him, God. In Jesus' name we pray. If y'all don't take anything from everything that I just said, my prayer and the reason why I did this video is because God came to set the captive free. Y'all have a great night.